was in the hands of the imperialists, that they know they can, they, those weapons become useless when people rise up and overwhelm the existing government, you know? Uh, for instance, the nuclear weapons in the hands of the Soviet uh, leadership uh, did not uh, amount to anything when uh, the people rose up against uh, against those uh, um, uh, against the uh, uh, revisionist regime. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first is related to his question. Uh, is there any better policy than than neoliberal liberal policy? Uh, because we have to, I think we have to accept that we uh, easy to accept that uh, neoliberal policy is not perfect. But I think there's no uh, other um, policy is, is better than that at this time. So sometimes it's not perfect. It has some 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 weakness as you as you find out. But but the world economy still have to 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 use this thing. You see from the the, uh, the history. Uh, neoliberal uh, and then Keynesian and then neo and then Keynesian. Two kind of, of thoughts uh, replace each other to to dominate the, the policy and and then yeah is so so also related to, to, to his uh, his question is there any is that um, is there any other policy is better than than that that is uh, the first question uh, the second question is about the uh, the explanation from from Marxism, because uh, from the first uh, crisis, we people can can use that uh, theory to explain uh, from production is is spent too much, and then uh, the working people with limited wage cannot meet that uh, production, then lead to the crisis. Until now, people still use that se the same similar explana uh, explanation. To, to explain that that kind of, of, of crisis. So my question is, from the, the Marxian, uh, Marxism theory, is there any difference to, to explain uh, this crisis and the crisis after crisis? Because the crisis are some something quite quite different. But Marxism gives the same. I mean, the same point to to critique or to point out. So we found that is quite something like, like mono, monotone. Yeah, that is a second question. Uh, yeah. Or a related issue, um, related question, probably, to that one. Uh, you mentioned the circles. Um, I was willing to ask, uh, at which, which points starting the Communist Manifesto do you think socialism did one? And um, like, which in your cycle theory do you consider the peak points till now? Which the communist party uh, You mentioned the circle theory. Uh, your one about um, cycle. Ah. Which ones do you till now? If you say that we're back in a certain point, I would like to know which ones do you consider points when socialism? Uh, uh, I, I, uh, if I may answer you directly. Um, so I made a study, a presentation of how this. Uh, cycles of 30 to 50 years uh, occurred. No? Um, in 1848, there was a Communist Party Manifesto. There, was, well, there were workers uprisings all over Europe, but uh, those were not even led by communists. No? But uh, then, um, under the guidance of the Communist Manifesto, uh, by 1871, there will be the Paris Commune. Um, um, uh, People belong to the First International would have something to do with the making of the Paris Commune, but that lasted only for two months. No? But then the, social, the proletarian uh, uh, revolution was prototyped by 1871. Without 1871, you could not have Lenin's, uh, uh, I would say, uh, yes, as Lenin would put it, you cannot have, uh, uh, you cannot have socialism in 1917 without the lessons learned from uh, the, uh, from the defeat of the Paris Commune. So, 1871 to 1917, that's uh, some, how many decades? Three, three decades or so. Then, uh, you, um, then uh, the Soviet Union would 
come under fire from Nazi Germany, which seemed like it will not last. No? But after World War II, you have, uh, whereas before the claim was one sixth of the earth uh, uh, was governed by a socialist government, after uh, World War II, you have one third. Then came the big negative change. And first, the socialism. <laughs> Uh, you, you have the development of revisionism in the Soviet Union, uh, and then the split going along in the international communist movement, and then I will now answer uh, the first question. Yeah. Uh, because uh, <coughs> the first question, is there really an alternative? Well, really, we've been confronted with big factors. Uh, big factors uh, unimaginable before, no? Uh, you know, from the backdrop of uh, uh, socialist countries accounting for one third of humanity, and plus the national liberation movements in the 50s, down to the Cultural Revolution of 19 of, of the of uh, 1965 uh, uh, to 75. Uh, then you have, uh, uh, you know. From the viewpoint of the U.S., uh, both from the eyes of uh, Brzezinski and the power player um, Kissinger, huh? yeah, uh, uh, Brzezinski, Brzezinski knew very well the internals of the Soviet Union, Eastern Europe. He knew, he already knew that uh, uh, something was developing for quite some time against uh, against the socialist cause. Uh, capitalist greed was creeping, no? Uh, it ranges from, you know, local officials uh, banqueting, giving banquets and birthdays to all their friends, or stealing and declaring the products of the entire uh, factories as, uh, are, as defective, and then bringing the goods to the so-called free market, no? Uh, the mafia, the so what came to be called the mafia in, in, in Russia, they did not develop only after 1991. Uh, even during the time of, uh, of Brezhnev, who was described as the collectivist, centralist, neo-Stalinist, uh, the corruption was going on. No? So they, they knew. Um, as a daughter of mine uh, living in China said, you know, Co uh, greed and corruption seems to be, uh, uh, to be very little opponents of those who, who are for socialism. But anyway, um, you see, uh, as far as the underdeveloped countries were concerned, they were for a certain alternative. It was clear to them. They were calling for a new international economic order. But, you know, uh, uh, many of those proposing uh, the new international economic order uh, promising industrial development for the backward countries of the third world. Um, they were banking on playing on the differences of uh, on the com on the competition and conflicts of the of the of what used to be called the socialist bloc no? and uh, the capitalist uh, world. But uh, I think by the second half of the seventies, uh, socialism had become already an illusion. Uh, you know, uh, public ownership still existed, but uh, the bureaucrats were stealing everything that was produced in the public sector. No, everything did the say <laughs> they, they were. Uh, you have already a disemboweling of uh, what used to be called socialism, and then the.